Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Welcome, everybody, to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky talk tech, social media, and more from the local nerds that use it right here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, and they're all right here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, we got on the couch this week, first of all, joining us as usual, Nutters. You called me a nerd. I, I called everybody a nerd. Okay. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, we're, we're definitely big with the thick rims uh, tonight. Mm-hmm. Heavy on the thick rim Heavy on the thick tonight. rim glasses tonight. <laughs> like, it's, it's pretty pretty universal. Uh, also with the over on the couch there, it's AJ Coptic. Virtualpotholes.com. Senior awesome cast <laughs> Apple correspondent. Yes. <laughs> he always, he <laughs> always wanders in the studio I, when it's, it's time for... Uh, for for an Apple announcement, it seems when the Apple CEOs start talking, I show up on this couch or I show up via the internet somehow, and I and I have insights. So. That's right. That's right. Also, um, in an interesting uh, scheduling uh, <laughs> uh, arrangement, we yes. ended up with. But you know, I think it's going to be good. This I think it's going to be, be very good. This is going to um, be bad. He's, it's be great. He's already pointing out that I left out the Microsoft band in my state of the smartwatch address today on basic sorgonomics at sorgatron.com. It's crazy Kraus. Ron Kraus, how you doing? How you doing? Show off that. Good view. How are you? All right. All right. Show off that Microsoft band for the video people yes, right there. there it is. It right has there. the time in case you were. See, that's the thing. I, I consider it. I think of the Microsoft band as a fitness band first. So wasn't you? I like. So I put it in that category with the Fitbits, but obviously I'm, it does a little bit more. The only thing I'm kind of surprised by is the fact that he wears it with the screen on the outside. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it that way. Well, yeah, that's how a normal watch is worn. But like the the, the problem is, is that I, like you can't the, the problem I had with the one that I have is that I, I don't I, did, I couldn't like read it without having to do some sort of like weird arm twisting maneuver. <laughs> the only way to actually read it and like read it side to side mm-hmm. is to actually mount is to put the screen on the inside which means that if you put your hands down to type you're just scraping the screen on your desk <laughs> it's not nice and so uh and yeah. i wouldn't trust that yeah it's okay like i don't even like like on mine like i hate that the clasp is like rubbing on my macbook like I'm, i just feel like after a year i'm just going to see this giant mark on my macbook yeah where so, that is so. i uh i so i actually have a microsoft band for sale if anybody <laughs> I'm not kidding. If anybody wants one, if Ron, Actually, if, you have, if you have a friend who would like one, we might have to talk about that. We could do that because my better half might want it. You can, you can there you absolutely go. buy it. There you one. go. Deals on the show. That's how that. That's especially how when it deals with night. stuff on the wrist. Anyways, this is the awesome <laughs> cast. If you have a deal that you want to make with somebody on the show, um, you can check us out. We're at awesomecast.net. You can find all the links to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course the mini awesome cast we've been doing. I uh, did a real quick one today about the MacBook. Uh, 12 inch that we'll be talking about here on this show and there's other stuff we've been talking about through the week uh, as well as the regular show as well and you can also find us out uh, at awesome cast on twitter uh look for awesome cast on facebook the facebook group there's a lot of conversation going on there we had a lot of fun on uh, during the uh, apple announcement yesterday uh, actually with uh alex Stug and everybody else that popped up on there um and uh, of course google plus and you can join us here live at live that sorgatron media.com every tuesday i say 6 30 p.m eastern because then we talk about ag's new podcast mm-hmm. and we talk about other things that aren't on the show yet and then we finally get going um but you get to get all that uh kind of extra stuff when you join us in the chat room uh just like uh juggalo john is and uh chachi was in there and wheels uh to let us know what they think about what's going on in tech so uh with that let's get into it with our awesome things of the week first let's just do a broad awesome thing of the week the biggest thing and whether you think it's you know the thing i'm going to you're going to get replacing your microsoft band or a pebble watch say um i mean it is a a pretty significant announcement and and pretty awesome the stuff they they have in this uh with the apple watch um not a lot new other no. than we got pricing and we got really spelled out what exactly, uh, you know, what what is going to be the price? What are the different versions? Um, and we got just more kind of discussion about uh, the functions, the features. They, they got a running model to show it off, I guess. Well, they, they the big specific thing there was that they they rehashed everything they they announced the first time around. Right. So there's nothing terribly new from an announcement standpoint. They announced the pricing. 
uh, which has been uh, talked about now since they first talked since they first announced it back in October. Um, if you've been following it closely, the the gold watch is uh, shouldn't the price of the gold watch shouldn't have surprised you. Mm -hmm. uh, that ten thousand dollar number has been swinging around for a couple months now, um, but nobody really wanted to believe it. Um, I, I think the the big thing though is that the one of the things that I noticed early on was that the 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 bands are swappable with the same watch. So like the sport bands are inter are interchangeable. Right. The like regular watch, the stainless steel ones, those are interchangeable only on the stainless steel one. They're not interchangeable between the two, or you probably could interchange them between the two, uh, but you would end up with a uh, a band that doesn't match the actual rest of the watch, which I'm sure Johnny Ive would just wreck his Bentley uh, to know that you did that. Um, he he would um, actually no. There's a driver, but the <laughs> by the way, if you haven't, if honestly, if you want to get if you want to get like deep inside Apple. Uh, Ian Parker from the New Yorker did like a book length article on Johnny Ive. It's like mm -hmm. 17,000 words. It's like mm -hmm. not short. It will eat a couple hours of your day. However, it gives you a lot of the insight into like the watch, their design process and Johnny Ive as a dude. The, the, this is a, you talk about that, you know, the design of this, this is definitely on a different level. This isn't just the, you know, like we saw even with the MacBook that we're going to talk about a little later, like the it's thinner and lighter and, and, and the, the, the design is, is so smooth. You know, it's like we are designing a, we're designing men's fashion at this point. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's it, this is something on another level and it's something outside the realm of what, you know, a lot of us tech pundit podcasters uh tweeters talk about and that was kind of the problem here yeah is that apple was clearly positioning this i mean you don't you don't invite the editor of vogue to the original announcement without at least aiming at that that market right right they right. were clearly not going to compete with the microsoft band and android wear and pebble and all that other stuff they're like you know what you guys can all have access to because i mean let's be honest like this is kludgy this and the band and everything is is this is like a big giant piece of plastic on my wrist mm -hmm. but i mean i'm the one that this is this is the today version of I would get the fifteen dollar Casio watch with right. the calculator on it, you right. know. And that's that was the thing is that this the the watch and they they made no uncertain terms about it when they came out and said we have an eighteen karat solid gold version. Mm -hmm. There was no doubt in my mind when they first announced this that this was not for this wasn't for people who want to buy a two hundred dollar device. No, this was this was made when they said the starting price is three fifty. I went oh starting yeah this is going way up. Yeah. So the stainless steel starts at five fifty, goes clear up to almost eleven. It goes clear up to eleven hundred dollars. And the interesting part is, is not you're not you're the the expense isn't for features. No. At this point, it's not like when the iPad. Oh. It starts at four ninety nine. If you want more, if you want more storage, uh, storage, like uh, you know, uh, you know. It was mostly storage, I guess, right? Yeah, it's it's storage and connectivity. So you, if you got the three G or the Wi Fi model, or right, the right. storage, and that's it. But that's that, it. That, like that's it. Like oh, I can get away with the this. It's like no, I I just want the watch. But do I want the rubber band or do I want I'm something sorry, can stylish? We, can fluoroelastomer? What? <laughs> that's the actual term for the material that they made it. I like when the, there was the late. Um, I, I really need to make sure that I get this name right because she's doing very nice things for the world. Uh, the runner lady? Yes. Christy something burns. I'll get you in a moment. Uh, Christy. Christy uh, Turlington, Turling, Turlington Burns. Christy mm -hmm. Turlington Burns. Thank you, Sorg. I wanted to make sure I get that name right. So she's up there. She ran a half marathon in Africa with the watch on. Mm -hmm. And she referred to it as the rubber band. Johnny Ive is sitting 12 feet from her and was probably staring daggers. Just <laughs> absolute daggers. Just going floral elastomer. We worked for months on that. And it's honestly, it's just, yeah, this, the Sorg is showing the video for those of you on the video feed. Um, I like that you refer to her to those as the runner and not the model. Cause that's what she, that well, was, that's the thing. I didn't get till afterwards that she was, I she thought was she a was model just in the nineties. I yeah. thought she was like specifically like a running star or something. No, I had no idea. So she's on the, the, they said they, they started with nineties model mm -hmm. and then, uh, then mentioned the fact that she is a runner and she's on the Harvard she's, medical school board. She's 46. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. She's 46 year old. She's mom of two mm -hmm. and, uh, she's running for, to support, um, medical supplies and medical access for mothers in Africa, which is mm -hmm. an awesome charity. And so that's, that's the thing you should take away from that. Not she ran a race with the watch on just mm -hmm. go from there. But, um, 
one of the things she she called it the rubber band and i thought it was kind of funny and <laughs> the internet went nuts when she said that but so those those bands the sport band as i'm going to call it because floral elastomer is not something that rolls off the tongue nicely johnny um <laughs> i just like making fun of johnny hive but um that sort of thing that that those bands those are interchangeable between all of the all of the devices, but the rest of them are seem to be kind of locked in. Uh, I have my eye on a seven hundred dollars steel model because I want to look professional. Because I if I if I just wanted to buy one, I would go buy I would buy the forty two millimeter um, sport one with the bright blue band. Is that the bigger or the smaller one? That's the bigger one. So okay. it's thirty eight and forty two. By the way, if you uh, if you have an iPhone and you download the Apple Store app and you go into the Apple Watch. You can uh, tap on si- like C sizing, and it will put up a full size version on your phone, and then you can hold it on your wrist and see really? which size would be bigger. Um, so this is a lot of the conversation is around the band. Really? Is- yeah. Listen, you're trying on a watch, and you're going to pay multiple hundreds of dollars for it. Like honestly, the Microsoft mm-hmm. Band comes in how many sizes? Mm-hmm. It comes in three Two. sizes. Three. There's small, medium, and large. So I wouldn't, is there only two? I, I'm almost positive there was a small when I bought mine. I bought the medium and there was a large size too. I'm sorry. Yes, there's three sizes. Yeah, so there's there three small, sizes. Small, medium, and large. And Microsoft has sizing on their website on how to size properly. I went to the Microsoft store here in Pittsburgh and I actually like tried on the large and I tried on the medium. So um, there's the app right Yeah, there. so there's the app and then there's a way to uh, see the sizing. Mm-hmm. And a view pricing, and yeah, view pricing, and wow. then you can see the sizing, and then you can flip through all the models. But the bands themselves are the actual um, price difference, and the different types of bands have different pricing, and the different sizes have different pricing as well. So that's why the pricing is so widely varied. Um, so with the bands, I gotta bug you about this. Sure. Um, because the band is one of the big selling points, obviously, with right. this. Does Apple, are they planning on, do they have a patent on the specific connections to the watch? Are we going to see a lot of like Michael Kors? Are we going to see I, I haven't, designer? I haven't seen or heard anything mm-hmm. uh, in particular around whether or not that piece, mm-hmm. um, that the actual slide piece that clicks in mm-hmm. is an Apple only thing or if they're going to license that out. I imagine that they'll probably want to license that mm-hmm. out. Uh, just so they get that licensing fee coming in. Uh, I fully believe that Apple is going to make a sizable sum of money. I saw somebody saying today that they hope that they said, you know, will this be a money machine like the iPhone is or will it be a fizzle like the iPad? The iPad made $28 billion for Apple last year. That's not a fizzle at all. Yeah, yeah. In any People way, make a big form. deal when we see these numbers and say, oh, iPad, uh, iPads are slowing. It's like, yeah, slowing from an abnormal size. Right. You and, know? and the problem is, is and, and I think I saw somebody from Apple, or it was at least somebody who saw who saw that that pricing thing, like 28 billion, 28 billion and thought it was a fizzle. Um, I have a feeling this is the watch is going to be a lot more like the iPad, less like the phone, where people are going to buy it and they're going to have it on the wrist for at least two to three years between replacements versus a phone where people want to replace it yearly or right. want to replace it every two years or even earlier versus the watch where I could see them doing an iPad like thing where they go three to four years right. between replacements. I mean, I, I'm still amazed this, this iPad three that I have is still mm-hmm. plenty useful. Yeah. You know, and then, and- by the way, the i the a five chip that's in there is the same chip that's still in the the Apple TV, which just dropped to which $69. Just dropped $69. <laughs> and you- um, but yeah, I, I honestly think the, the, the watch they know that this is a different piece of technology. Yeah. This isn't just like, this isn't the phone I keep in my pocket. This is something that people are going to see on my wrist. And they were like, we want it to look nice right. and professional. So they have like actual leather. They're also demoing the, the watch in luxury stores in Europe, like Selfridges, which is a not insignificant little store in London. <laughs> they're going to have a display there. They're having, I forget what the name of the store is, but they're doing one in Paris as well. Like they are actually going full fashion with this. They're not... They're not in the two hundred dollar Best Buy market, mm-hmm. as 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 different as that may be for a lot of the tech people to hear. That gold one with the red band is going to be twelve thousand dollars. Isn't there a seventeen thousand dollar one? There up is there? a seventeen thousand dollar version. It's insane. Um, so, do you expect yearly updates like we do for the phones and the tablets and stuff, or is this going to be on a longer life cycle? Do you think? I really think they will do this yearly, but yes. I think that they will. The I think that they won't drop support as quickly no 
No, so I, much like I mean, look how long again, like look how long like the Apple II is stuck around. The Apple or I'm sorry, the iPad II is stuck around. The iPad three is still very useful. Um, so you'll you'll find like I I won't feel like I if I bought the first watch, I'm kind of out of luck three years from now, right? What's what's in so what's in the ten thousand dollar watch? Is good for a year? No, the ten thousand no. the ten thousand dollar watch is the newest one for the year. But Sorg, what what iPhone do you have over there? Uh, five S. Right, right. Which is still fine. Still fine. So yeah. There there are people who will swap these watches out yearly. Yeah. And they will do that. And I th- I think we need to we need to remember this is not about technology. No. Because the 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 seventeen thousand dollar one, and I was right, the red one. At seventeen thousand dollars, you know who's going to buy the daylights out of that one? Hmm. China. China's going to buy the crap out of that watch, mm-hmm. and that's not that's not even like a, a thing. Like red is a symbol of luck in China, and they love gold. Yeah, that is one of their big things. It is a symbol of wealth, and China is is a big reason why the iPad, the iPhone six plus, did very well. That's mm-hmm. why the average selling price of the iPhone went up is because of China. I think people are forgetting that there are a billion people in that country. It is a burgeoning middle class and they want to show off that they have a little bit of money. <laughs> so I think that that, the, I think that that $17,000 watch or that $10,000 watch will be good for a year, but I don't think that that is necessarily the, um, the watch that people are going to buy. Like, cause you could, I could see people swapping out a $350 watch yearly. Yeah, if there was a new like, ru- if there was a new medical or a new running function right. in that next year, yeah, people are going to drop the three hundred fifty dollar one and pick up a new one. You're, That's you're, not a problem. You're going to see a giant like like if you if they ever release the numbers for it, you'll see a di- giant curve of most of the watches sold are the sport edition, oh yeah, basic edition. Yeah, they're gonna the th- the three fifty is the volume one. The five hundred to thousand one is the one where mm. I wanted something a little bit nicer and I might hold on to it a little bit longer. And the ten thousand dollar one is what's going to drive all the revenue. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have this like giant chunk of revenue. The average selling price is likely going to be higher than a thousand dollars, and that's only because the luxury or the watch edition is ten thousand and up. Yeah. So if somebody buys that one, it's like someone buying ten of the highest end steel watches, or like there's there's an order of magnitude there. Mm-hmm. So the average selling price is going to be high on this, but so. So comparatively, I mean, let's kind of go around the horn. I kind of spoke on this on, on the other podcast, like I mentioned. Um, but, you know, for me, it's a man. It's nice. And I'm kind of stuck on it. You know, you, I, I don't have a choice between this and Android because I am an iPhone user. And it's same with Android people. They can't hop the other way. Uh, Alex Cars uh, dropped an email kind of uh, talking to that fact. Cause he's, a, he's very much in the Android side of things. Um, uh, where, where are you looking at this compared to maybe what you're using or what you expect to use in the future if you're looking at a watch? Like, well, AJ, you go ahead first. Uh, I am definitely in the market for an Apple Watch. Yes. I need to, I really want to see the first impressions. I really want to see what people are using. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also really want to see the, th- I want to see it on my wrist first. Mm-hmm. One of my big complaints about the Microsoft band, and I'm sorry I'm backing on the band right now, but that's the only <laughs> wearable that I've owned that's so okay. far. That's okay. We're going him next to, right? to, to retort. So the, the main thing that I have a problem with with the band was I found it to be tremendously uncomfortable. I didn't like wearing it. It was an uncomfortable thing because of the way that they laid the batteries out in, in the sides of the bands mm-hmm. and the uh, the sensor that was in the bottom plus the screen on top plus wearing me wanting to wear the screen on the inside so I didn't have to like contort my arm mm-hmm. to read it. Um, I just, it just wasn't the right device for me. And I think that the Apple watch fits there. Uh, Google, there's some rumors swirling right now that Android is, that Google's preparing to bring Android wear over to iOS. I don't know if you saw that. If they did right. that, I mean, seriously, if they did that, I would consider an Android wear. I, I was, I would seriously, I, I I, I'm kind of still on the, the pebble bandwagon myself. Right. Cause I feel like that's the, it gets the right stuff done. Right. Without. You know, without any compromises, basically. Right. And it, but the Android is nice. Yeah. And and I, and I would kind of like it. I, I the the I have a couple coworkers who have the Moto 360. They are quite happy with it. I think it looks way too big. I am not a. Lo- I, I haven't worn. And this is the other thing. I haven't worn a wrist or I haven't worn a watch on my wrist in probably ten years at this point. Mm-hmm. So for me to go back to a watch, it has to be something I really, really want to wear. Because I've grown all the hair back here on my arm <laughs> from wearing metal link bracelets that have con- that have consistently torn the hair out of my wrist. Oh, um, I want to show off a juggle. John posted this in the chat. It's just like a Rolex. Rolex only absolute in eight months. 
Well, can we can we talk about the actual? Let's continue on, and then I will get into the technical aspects okay. of watches first. <laughs> All right, uh, Cross. What, what is what's your kind of take on this versus you know, what you've experienced so far with the band and such? Well, see, I guess that's where I have a problem, and I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I just don't know what to expect from something like this. For me, I look at this band. Like you said earlier, before we started recording, mm-hmm. you know, it is a great fitness tracker and it is a great notification system. I guess you mentioned a lot of this stuff on your morning show. Um, and I, that's what I really like about it. I don't feel like I need to have some specific app running on this band at this time, getting the notifications, not having to pull my phone out of my pocket every five minutes is more than enough for what i need unfortunately for alex i'm not having the same problems he did i actually really (laughs) like the band i think it's pretty comfortable on my arm Mm -hmm. i read it just fine and i was like you until this i hadn't had a watch on my arm and i can't tell you how long Mm -hmm. so i can understand that you know i guess i'll wait and see i think it is unfortunate that Apple and Google both have taken the approach that Microsoft didn't where, yes, it's best on Microsoft, but it will run on everything else. I wish they would adopt that idea more often than not. Because let's face it, I'll never see an Apple Watch because I'll never own an Apple phone. No, no. But I'm out. I do wonder if they will open that up eventually, like maybe like Android. You don't think so? Not in the slightest. No? Nope. And guess, it's and to be entirely fair to to Microsoft here, the reason they opened up the band to work on everything is because they had to. Right, right, exactly. Like if if, you, if they limit their market to just people who own Windows phones, it's it's a sizable portion over things like BlackBerry, but it's not a huge portion yeah. of the market. And even to be fair, like like the even the Android where I'd be I'd be I'd be cautious. Yeah. You know, like even Pebble, Pebble more stuff works on Pebble when it's on Android. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's more, the same thing. More with, of the Google Glass worked if you were on Android. There was something else I was just yeah. thinking of that was like a, a specific. Oh, uh, the automatic thing. Mm-hmm. The the thing you plug into your uh, your car. Yeah, uh, you, I'm sure you guys. If you if you're a podcast listener, I'm sure you've heard the ad for I've, this. I've, I've I've had I have one in my car. Yeah, I have one on the way. Um, <laughs> but the uh, do not disturb function as part of that only works on Android. Doesn't work on iOS. Huh. Apple doesn't isn't going to open up the Apple Watch to work on anything else. Right. Right. Um, they aren't going, I don't see them opening this up. I only see Google opening up Android wear because they see an opportunity. They mm-hmm. see the, they see the Apple watch starting at three forty nine. I think the most expensive Android wear device is 300. So you're kind of like, they know that they could carry that low end market with devices that people would probably like. I don't think there's mm-hmm. anything wrong with the 360 I or think... anything wrong with the LG watch R, but there's, that's not what I want. And I don't think that any of those watches, this is my problem. I don't think that any of those watches look that great. No. I don't. No, I think they all look kind of, I think a lot of the Android Wear watches look like a piece of plastic with a screen on the front. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that on my wrist when I'm sitting in a meeting with a customer talking about their quarter million dollar piece of equipment that I'm installing. Yeah, that is there is there is levels to this. It's a level of geekiness, right? right. Like I, you know, like you have a big red thing, you know, it, it's drawing attention to begin with. Right. Yeah. I thought I, I honestly wanted to buy the the pebble with the orange around it, mm-hmm. um, and then I didn't because I thought about it. I talked to people who own pebbles, and they were like, "Yeah, I mean, it was okay, but it mm-hmm. wasn't something that I needed." Um, I think the uh, and, and Dutters, feel free to. Thanks. <laughs> oh, she, Dutters is looking at things on her tablet right now. The giant um, Moto. <laughs> yes, the Moto 360. Mm. Um, I, I, the other thing here is that from a technical standpoint, yeah, it looks like a Rolex, but it'll be obsolete in eight months. Um, I think the big one there is that um, <clears throat> the Rolexes aren't the best time keeping pieces. Mm-hmm. You're not buying a Rolex to keep time. If you wanted something that kept time really well, you'd go buy like a $15 Casio watch Mm -hmm. because quartz watches keep time better or just as well as a Rolex. You are buying a Rolex because it is a Rolex. You are buying an Omega watch because it's an Omega watch. You're not buying it because it tells time really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where Apple is aiming. They're not aiming for, they're not aiming for geeks. They're not aiming for us. Mm -hmm. They're aiming for people who wear $200 shirts. (laughs) 
Ooh, yeah. They really Not are close. Uh, <laughs> uh, Katie, what, what are your thoughts on, on the watch? And we'll move on to some other things here. I'm actually, I'm excited to see one. I, 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 I the display looks nice. It's not overly gaudy or um, something you could, like we've said, it, it's fashionable. It's something you could wear and, and not go, Oh man, what am I wearing this giant? Like I'm not, like I said, I was looking at the moto 360 and it's mm-hmm. massive, mm-hmm. but it, I am, I think, and I, as in, I love my iPhone, so it's kind of like I'm already on board as far as what they're going to offer. Um, but I, don't, I, I wish I had 12. <laughs> well, I, I think the other thing here that I don't think many people picked up on is that if you want to go try one on, you have to schedule an appointment. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's not like you just walk in and go, I want to try on the watch. No. <laughs> no, you got to like book an appointment and everything. Well, they already have the the layout for that with the Apple Genius Bar and right. everything. Yeah, so this, this isn't nice. something new that, they're, so. that they've done before, but they, this is the first time I think they've ever had an appointment to sell a product. This is mm-hmm. mind-blowing. Like, if yeah. you think about it, we have not had a big tech thing that has really changed the way we look at different this is this is different this is way yeah. beyond your normal announcement this is uh, shooting into a whole new range with, with with just by making it fashionable which is kind of crazy if you think about it yeah and i and i think that that was one of the big things that they that they announced when that they talked about when they first announced mm-hmm. it was that we want to make something that people like to wear that people want to show off that they're wearing mm-hmm. versus a you know and they didn't really knock the pebble so much as the um they didn't knock the pebble or the band or any of the other wearables. And I'm making sure that I say the band every time because I want Ron to feel happy. Um, <laughs> but they didn't knock them so much as they said, they, these are devices. They're either fitness wearables like mm-hmm. the Fitbit mm-hmm. or adding in the um, adding in some of the, the Android Wear watches where they say, you know, this is something that's a that you could use that technically works, that mm-hmm. has all the features, checks all the boxes, but isn't something that you actually want to put on your wrist and, and wear. Um, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm landing on this is that I don't like any of the Android, any of the Android wear devices. And I tried a couple of them on, I've tried on a Moto 360. I think it's huge. One of the other big tips that they wanted to get it to people who want to wear watches is the fact that they're actually sized in watch sizes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The 38 millimeter, the 42 millimeter, those are normal watch sizes that you could go into a watch store and, and say, you know, I, I, I don't know this watch, this is a 38 millimeter watch. Can I try on a 42? Cause mm-hmm. I want to see how it fits. Uh, there are people who buy 46 millimeter watches. I would love to know what the size of the Moto 360 is. Um, but that sort of thing is a, it, that's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've talked enough about the watch. If you're going to go buy mm-hmm. one, you're going to go buy one. If you're not, Certainly. I'm not helping to convince you. I'm certain of it. Certainly. And, 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 and surprisingly, that was not the only thing announced today. So we're going to get to some of that here with mm-hmm. our awesome things. Uh, but first, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. The guys uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with great pizza in Pittsburgh. I just found the pizza. Oh, guys. You, you, you didn't know it was over there? You, <laughs> I, you, no, you didn't I, grab a slice before you got going? I, no. I, Especially, well, yeah, like, you guys are hanging here for, for a while with the Ben's well, Mayhem show. Well, so. I saw the, I, sm- I smelled it, and I looked around, and I saw the box in the in the, in the the garbage can. I was like, did Sori eat it all? Yeah, <laughs> I was very sad. <laughs> no, um, I just need to take the trash out. No, I, 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 I see you, pizza box. I see you over there. I'm going to get you. Continue with the room. <laughs> Right, uh, but uh, Slates on Broadway, they, they've been supporting us for, geez, I guess over a year now uh, here, and uh, and uh, they, 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 they make great stuff, gourmet pizza from scratch, uh, best ingredients, uh, right here along the tracks here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in Beachview. Um, Ron, you've been out here, you've had it. Thumbs up all the way, I really enjoy their pizza. Nice. Very good stuff. Also, check them out. They're in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. Uh, they are beer-friendly, I believe, at both locations. Yes. Uh, so uh, go check them out and tell them that the awesome cast sent you. They're at SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. And, uh, of course, look for Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. It will make you hungry. Um, so let's get to the awesome things of the week. Uh, let's first uh, hit up the couple and round out this Apple announcement. Uh, first of all, uh, Mike. My- Kind of along the revolutionary side of this, uh, kind of a surprise left field thing. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be. A, no, no, it's not for you. You think? No. What? The MacBook? No, 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 no. I'm talking research kit. Oh, yeah. Research kit. Research was, kit is out of left field. Research kit was not entirely out of left field, but it, it plays into a lot of the stuff that well, was was precluding. Right. But was to the point where this is not <laughs> this is not. 
Nope. What's what? Go ahead. There are this, words. This is this is not a here. thing that um you know they're gonna make a lot of money. Basically, you could say that all that extra money they're gonna make on seventeen thousand dollar watches may fund some of this stuff. <laughs> um, so at least they're doing something good for the world out of this, right? Um, but I guess the idea is that they're they're going to have uh, this research kit uh, uh system that um is gonna help with medical research. Using the device, um, they had apps that came out yesterday based on this. Uh, one's tracking glucose levels, one kind of testing Parkinson's disease uh, uh, symptoms, and, and other stuff like that. I think diabetes was in there. Diabetes too, yeah. was in there, yeah. I think it's the glucose bit, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and they're going to roll this out uh, with, with other stuff. So it, this is kind of like a supersized extension of the health kit, I feel. Yeah. Um, as far as like tracking things like they were talking about one and I forget what the disease was for, but they're talking about the idea that you could put the phone in your pocket, walk across the room and it tells you how well your balance is. Yeah, that was that was Parkinson's. Um, for, that was Parkinson's. Yeah. So yeah. The, the big thing here. So what's interesting here is that if you have now if you're like me and you follow Apple way too closely, <laughs> um, I admit to this entirely. But one of the big things is that a lot of the people that they talked about and that were in the video were Apple employees that were hired and everybody thought they were working on the watch. They were not working on the watch. They were working on this. Um, wow. Yeah. So there was a lot of people that were in there that were specifically that have been around Apple for a little bit. And everybody's like, oh, they're really working on the fitness part of this. They're really working on the health part of this. And no, it turns out they're working on this other thing, mm -hmm. which is actually really great. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that they said it's open source and I hope they actually open source this one in, uh, this time around. Mm -hmm. iMessage was supposed to be open source mm -hmm. and an open standard and then it wasn't. Um, the uh, I, I, I have a feeling that this one is a little bit more... Mm -hmm. uh, altruistic and open uh, right. source than just this is a differentiating feature on our devices. It, it, uh, Alex is saying in the chat room, uh, research kit to me is about the equivalent to a connect three or three uh, Xbox 360 connect helping communities out, which I think it's no, a little more than that. No, I mean, this is a little is, more wider is, and I think it does a lot more. It's more practical because a lot of people have this already in their pocket now. Now. Yeah. So there's, there's, so, I'm trying to figure like the angle. So, okay. So like I'm looking at, uh, an asthma app here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so helping asthma sufferers breathe a little more easy. So it, it's helping with you. So it looks like it, it, it's helping you with, with your sy symptom mm -hmm. control. And not only is it giving you feedback on your illness, but then that information is, it's another data point for, in this case, Mount Sinai, uh, Cornell Medical College, and LifeMap are going to be also getting this information. You sign off. Like, you write a signature. Yeah. So it, it follows all the FDA, FDA, FDA guidelines. And you say, I am giving this information. Correct. So, so uh, Which is, I think, something that they ran into with HealthKit that might have been an issue. Some people were concerned about putting their personal health information into HealthKit. Right. Um, I think the big difference here, and this is one of the, the asthma one in particular was... We take data from various air quality systems mm -hmm. and air, various air quality measuring systems and then correlating that with your asthma for the day and then correlating that with all the other people that are around you that have asthma that are also inputting their data to see, hey, we saw this spike in some sort of particulate and then, oh, hey, all of these other asthma sufferers also had the same issue. We can kind of correlate asthma outbreaks or asthma issues to these particulate matter, to this particulate matter being higher for that day, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and especially here in the Pittsburgh area, that is a thing. That is mm -hmm. a real thing because we still have heavy industry in the area. Mm -hmm. Just many people want to say the steel mills are gone; they're not. Mm -mm. Um, that heavy particulate matter is still in the air um, and still affects asthma sufferers. Uh, the glucose thing, the Parkinson's thing, a lot of these things weren't just about like, oh, hey, we can measure data and bring it back. It's the fact that getting people to do uh, medical research studies is actually really, really hard. Um, you always, you hear stuff like ads on the radio where they're like, Hey, uh, if you're between the ages of 18 and 35 and you're a, a preg and you're pregnant, we want to discuss a study about, you know, pregnant women and weight gain in terms mm -hmm. of how that plays into and I've gotten, gestational you, you, I've gotten cards for, like that for the males. If yeah. you want to make 35 bucks and waste a couple of Saturdays, it's like, uh, you right. know, it, it's hard to buy into that. And mm -hmm. that's the sort of thing where the, the, the one bit that hit me from that video was there was a, um, somebody from, I believe it was breast cancer. 
it was a breast it was the breast cancer app and they were talking about the fact that they sent out these like surveys like cards that sort of thing that we're just talking about here and they sent those out to like 108 they sent those out to 1800 people and got like 30 responses mm -hmm. that is a huge amount of effort to get all of those out to all of those people and only get 30 people that want to actually do that if mm -hmm. they can send these things out daily with very little effort and get more people to sign up because oh hey i just have to keep this device in my pocket that mm -hmm. i'm already going to keep in my pocket anyways great um, so I really think the research kit thing is probably the best, the actual real life best thing that they announced yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's nice to see that they are, they're open sourcing it, that they are really pushing the medical portion of, hey, listen, this is a device you have in your pocket. It has sensors and the sensors are actually pretty good. Um, so Parkinson's where it measures your voice and the microphone and the CPU help to help to detect like wobbles in your voice to determine your ability to, to, to speak or walking 20 steps out 20 steps back which is what you would do in an office anyways mm -hmm. but now you're doing it in your house with your phone that that information can come back to a research facility or can go back to a research group and actually help figure out okay how bad is Par how is parkinson's doing with this person in particular versus everybody else and how much exercise is that person doing and that's sort of and stuff. plus and then, and, and, and then this this will build on because as people get apple watches Mm -hmm. that do the heart rate, that do all this other fitness stuff that can be tied into all this stuff and add another data point on your body, basically. Right. Um, that kind of goes into that quantified uh, self that we've been talking about the last couple of years that, hey, we're going to have a sensor for about everything. This is that kind of getting realized to a point with at least two data points here. Right. And I could see the Microsoft Band getting played into that because that Certainly. does have a health sensor or Certainly. a heart sensor, although... Um, according to Joanna Stern from the Wall Street Journal, basically every single one of the, the type of heart rate sensors that are in the band, and there's, I think Withings has one too, where it uses that like green light to see your heart rate. Yeah. They're like way off. Um, and there, there's concern for this one too. Is, <laughs> yeah, is, is, is this going to be great? Because because it, just yeah, like, it's, uh, they're all the same basically sensor. the wrist is like not a great place to get your heart rate too. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they, they, I think they were saying like uh, if you're doing certain like exercises like house things or something, you need like a band across, around your waist. Yeah, the actual, your doing chest. an actual EKG yeah. band. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think still, I, it, it, the whole idea is it gives you an idea. I, and I think that the research kit is, is a really, it's a really great move. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad to see that they're doing it. I'm glad to see that they've, um, I'm glad to see that they did that. I hope that they get partnership with Google and they can get that on the Android as well. Please. Um, I don't, I don't want this to be like, this is an Apple only thing. No, I really want that to see that. I want to see a partner with Microsoft. I want to see a partner with Google. I want to say, Hey, Fitbit. here's this with Fitbit with, with all of these devices and actually bring this all together and say, Hey, guess what guys, everybody in the world now has a smartphone. Like all most right. people have smart have smartphones. Yeah. Let's let's use this for better research for better right. data. Right. I think, it'd be um, great. I think a lot. What one of the issues they're going to run into is the reliability, because you're not saying I can say, oh yeah, I have asthma and I am 18 and over and I am this, and you're not backing up any of that information. Well, I can just check boxes. I mean, not saying it just it, it's almost right. it's good, but it's also opening up all these doors to this and and what kind of information and it just it's it's a, just a whole Pandora's box of it's all, I mean, I'm not disparaging right, it, of right. course, but it's like now you're, well, how reliable is your data? Now when you write research reports or, you know, or a research paper, you could have to say, well, you know, I had this many participants, but this is the reliability based on percentage. Right. But that's, actual that's how, that's how science, that's how scientific papers work. Mm -hmm. They have to justify everything. And if the reliability of the data is called into question, it's called into question. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm hopeful that this drives some more research, but uh, mm -hmm. let's let's carry on. It's a point. It's mm -hmm. a it, it's a data point. Mm -hmm. uh, AJ, let's let's stay on the Apple. Uh, yeah, the yeah, that's what the we're MacBook, about uh, <laughs> twelve MacBook. inch. We got one port in there, guys. Two. It's an app. No, uh, well, one port, one headphone well, right, jack, one input port. So one input port <laughs> that is your. It, it's a it's a USB C. Right. USB 3.0 3.0 type C, which is kind of like your reversible lightning cord for your phone. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you're going to need this nice $79 dongle to break that out into well, into a uh, HDMI power and US like standard USB. They also have a, a VGA one too. Right. Um, there you go. The the big one there is. Uh, how many ports are you actually using on your machine? That's true. Now, now me, I'm a video person, so I'm uh, plugging a drive and I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I can only plug in two drives at a problem. Like how many people get to have to say that? Right. right. Uh, but so I, I, I think 
you know, this is, they're very much like, and there's not even an Ethernet adapter for this, apparently. Uh, yeah, there is. Is there? Yeah, you could use, there's a U, USB to Ethernet adapter. Is there a USB to Ethernet? The, uh, okay. Original, okay. The original MacBook Air, it's still out. It's 29 bucks. But I would need the dongle to do together dongle. Right, yeah, it's, it's so a dongle So as tree. I was ta- talking with Alex the other day, we're going to uh, dongle <laughs> daisy chain yeah, <laughs> to exactly what it is. get to a certain point. Because right. we, we was telling him, he just had to get like a mini DV to a, a VGA. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're just going to need like three dongles to get to the point where you need to get to, apparently. Right. Um, but I mean, but it, it's, 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 you know, Ethernet is out mostly for this kind of thing. This yeah. is, this is, um, I think it's impressive because it's that, that, you know, they showed the size of what the computer is and just yeah. filled the rest with battery. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I mean, that's, uh, let's, let's, I mean, I, I actually thought about this. So the other day or when they first announced it, I was like, oh man, when they first, when the first rumor came out, and by the way, Mark Gurman at nine to five Mac deserves a, a round of applause because he nailed this in February. Early February is when he like, they actually put out renderings and it was dead on. Like all the way down to like, this is where it is. This one's on the left. This one's on the right. It's retina. Here's how the keyboard works. Nailed the entire device. So whoever his source was uh, probably got fired. Anyways, um, I thought about how many ports that I use. I have a, I have a 13 inch retina MacBook Pro. Thanks work. And uh, I have two Thunderbolt ports, two USB ports, HDMI, SD card, headphone and power and two Thunderbolt ports. So I have a, I have a good number of ports on this teeny tiny little laptop here. Mm-hmm. The uh, the number of ports that I use on a regular basis is maybe two. Mm-hmm. I use power, and I use headphones. <laughs> so I could probably. You're a normal down. user. I mean, you're I, not I using it for media. You're you're no. you're using it for the internet mostly. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's the, and I think that's what we're looking at when we look at uh, this device. Is is it's it's for the people that do a certain kind of work on it. I don't think I'm running Final Cut on this thing. I don't no. think I'm running Wirecast on this thing. No. Uh, even at a thirteen hundred, you know, yeah, thirteen hundred dollar laptop. Um, but it's crazy thin. It's going to be great on a freaking plane. You know, uh, uh, students are going to buy the daylights out of that. Oh thing. yeah, you're going to see yeah. that everywhere. Uh, that by the way, that gold one is going to pop up in your Starbucks sooner rather than later. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. Somebody's going to have that gold one and it's going to be uh, somebody with a lot. So, so the colors, it's, it's <laughs> basically your iPhone colors now, yeah, they, right? They're the iPhone colors. They're gold, silver, right, and space gray. It's a matching set now. Come on. There right? you go. go. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, there's going to be, so, uh, I'm, I'm just going to stereotype the daylight side. There's going to be a college girl who's going to be in your Starbucks. She's going to have a white iPhone 6 gold that's going to match her gold MacBook. <laughs> And it's yep. just going to be on the table, and she's probably going to have a set of Bose Quiet Comfort 25, which are also white and gold <laughs> slash bronze, and it's all going to match, and she's going to love it, and she's not doing anything but trolling around on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> and Instagram about that. Um, but it's really it's, it's an iPad. It, it, it's, it's like a, it's a big it, iPad. It, it's a big yeah. iPad that runs. You know, they kept saying that we took the technology from this. We're looking at how people use it. And it makes sense. It's not for me. I'm buying a $2,000 MacBook Pro yeah. and still kind of wishing I had more ports, of course, right. um, and buying every lightning adapter that I can, you know, and losing all of them um, so I can continue to do the work that I want to do. Right. But, but I'm a power user as far as that size. I really should just be carrying around a Mac Pro at, the, at this rate. Let's be honest. Yeah. And, and that's that's I mean, I my laptop is. Uh, I, I would probably continue to use a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely considered the 12 inch MacBook Air the moment they announced now, it. I was like, Ooh, here's the other yeah, question. This came yes. from uh, Chilla, Chilla uh, DM'd me earlier today and wanted to know our thoughts on this. He's actually has been considering the MacBook Air, and mm-hmm. now this has come up and he is kind of considering what, you know, between the two. Uh, I was wondering our thoughts on this. I would um, go. I would go with this first. You would go with this because first because my eyeballs cannot see non-retina screens anymore. Well, there's that too. Oh, yeah, the, 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 I, I'm, this one's retina. I'm kind of in the same boat because I have this retina screen here, and all of these are like the like like first not gener- first generation LCD. Like even like like man, this this iMac looks kind of grody right now. <laughs> um, and it's yeah, they they if you go to the actual Apple site. Right. They they walk it through the the logic board is so very teeny tiny. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, if you scroll down, and click on that oh, MacBook one. Yeah, they, go to the MacBook. Click on page. this guy, right? So if you're on the video, you can actually see this. If you go to Apple's website, you can also see this. Um, one of the uh, things that they did was they shrunk the logic board, and the logic board is like a third of the size of the 11 inch MacBook Air's mm-hmm. logic board. It is so very. And logic board is just Apple's parlance for motherboard. They're all the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it takes up it, it, on a on a on a MacBook Pro. It takes up the majority of that computer. 
right on there. the on the MacBook Pro, it takes up the majority of it on the MacBook on the regular MacBook. And by the way, it's just MacBook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It is this teeny tiny little thing. It's probably the size of an iPhone six plus. Um, and then they filled the rest with contoured batteries. I, I think the battery technology in it is awesome. Um, so they the way they built the batteries, they built the batteries in sheets mm-hmm. and then tied them together um, so that they fit into like every little nook and cranny in there. So the only thing that's in there is the logic board, the trackpad, and then a massive battery, mm-hmm. as much battery as they could throw in Here's there. the other thing on that. Um, plus you get the new trackpad, which I think they are, uh, at least the 13-inch MacBook Retina. Pro yeah, the 13 is getting it, it. So it's this force. There's no click to it anymore. It's the force. It's the yes. force <laughs> click, <laughs> which is a harder click, which is a n- new function depending on where you, what application you're in. It's built into OS X already. Right. And so, I want, uh, by the way, I now I've, I've held out, if they come out with a magic trackpad, that has the force touch in it. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get that. I think I'm gonna want to too, yeah. because that's what I've been because I've been wanting the trackpad for the the, the Mac gestures. the Mac Mini mm-hmm. to do is gestures. Cause because I when I sit down with a mouse and I sit down in file cut, I can't like I don't even like the magic mouse. Like the gestures aren't like it, it's still it has a couple of gestures that you you know it's just a touch to do like two finger touch to do the scroll and everything, but that's it. Like scrolling side to side doesn't work for me and i i need that for the zoom in and everything right um and i i i'm so used to the way the macbook does and it, right. it, it, it's a no-brainer to get it on the desktop now too right so yeah i mean there there's that i think the the i saw some people reviewing the the, the keyboard mm-hmm. so they changed from a scissor oh god they changed from a scissoring <laughs> system to a butterfly system <laughs> Yeah, I'm just yeah. we're just making fingers we're just making finger shapes here, kids. If you're on the video, you should watch this. If you're not, you should watch it anyways. Uh, make sorts YouTube views go up. Um, but they they changed the way that the keys work so that they actually have less travel because they wanted to make it as thin as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, they went to a lot of trouble to make this thing as ridiculously thin as possible. And I know that there are a lot of people who are going to say, "Could you have given me like an extra quarter inch?" And just stuffed it with more battery. Nope, because that's not the point. It's not the point. Um, I, I think it's really funny. Uh, I've actually heard a lot of Mac pundit people talking about. Um, they were like one port. What do you mean one port? The the trackpad doesn't click. I don't want that thing. Yeah, you know what? It's not for you. It yeah. isn't for you. Yeah. If yeah. you're if you need something that has that many ports, or you wanted to have that many ports, go buy a MacBook Pro. Or even a MacBook Air. And I find it really interesting. They positioned this in the middle because it has a retina screen. If it didn't and it just had a regular like non-retina screen, it would have been lower. It would have probably been nine ninety nine. They would have moved the MacBook Airs up. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really like this device. I think this takes the place of the MacBook Air sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Um, but they'll probably hold on to the 13-inch MacBook Air for a while. Uh, but this is... this is, is it for a price point to have that $7.99 still? And that's maybe why they keep that price around. No, they, they keep that entry level seven ninety nine price. What the is the eleven seven ninety nine? I thought it was like eight ninety nine. I thought it was eight ninety nine. Well, okay, eight ninety nine. Sorry, but I don't know the max pricing as well. But it, I was I was curious. Actually, I, I talked to John about it, and uh, eight, he thought eight, eight, he was under the impression they were keeping that going for those lower entry level price that's true i could see them getting rid of it honestly i could see them at some point bringing the i could see them bringing this down eventually to 9.99 like Mm -hmm. the second gen they phase out the macbook air move this down to 9.99 and tada call it a day the macbook airline goes away um i I just i i think that that entry level price point is just because they can um there's nothing that like really drives that 899 other than they wanted the 13 to be 999. They wanted the 13 inch entry air to sit on that like nice kind of round number. And then they were like, well, it's the 11 inch. It's smaller. We can't make the 11 inch the same price as the 13 inch. Let's scoot that down a little bit. Um, so I, I really think that they have, they've got some room, they, but they do cover like this entire range from 499 or what's the base iPad mini now? 329 something like that from 300 with the ipad clear up to 3000 with the macbook pro and they hit a number of and they're they're still at like 229 for the first mac mini yeah the 229 the first mac mini or the first ipad mini ipad mini yeah that's i'm sorry the mac mini Mini starts at like 500 now i think yeah 499 i'm I'm really sad about the mac mini why because they soldered everything onto the board because they're still they so (sighs) yeah oh yeah so the the mac mini got bumped and they they added like 
they made everything nice that like it starts at eight gigs of memory. But remember, the internals of the Mac Mini are MacBooks. Yeah. So anything that the MacBook does, the Mac Mini eventually gets. So they so, soldered everything. So now I can't upgrade any uh, no. the memory because that was always the nice thing about the Minis is I just pop yeah. that bat. Like if anything else, you can upgrade that that RAM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they you, you yeah, can't do the Apple that tax is gone and, now. So if you wanted man. it, you can you can get 16 gigs of memory in a, in a Mac Mini, but you have you to order decide it at, start. The, at the beginning. And it's uh, an extra 200 bucks. Yeah, Something like that. Bucks. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of sad. But anyways, yeah, but, so there was that. Yeah, there's that. All right, let's get to non-Apple stuff. I think we have some stuff. Well, oh, well, I guess uh, passing mention HBO Now is starting on the Apple TV is $69. Three-month exclusive. Three-month exclusive, and um, then everybody else gets it. I- I'm hoping that means you can still do the web, maybe? No. No? You think you it's device buy, only? You have to buy it through uh, you have to buy it through iTunes. Through iTunes. And it's not just um, the Apple TV. Like, you can get it on iPad, right? iPad, iPhone, iPod yeah. Touch. Apple TV. And I'm presuming we're not going to Chromecast that from my iPad at that point. Nah, no, maybe not. No, no not so much. No, not for not three for, months at least. Not for three HBO months. HBO Go's not going anywhere though, correct? Correct. Yeah, correct, HBO Go's sticking around. I'm really curious because they were talking about that idea of maybe they start cracking down on the uh, password sharing. Well, you like saw a, the, the login sharing for this though, right? You could be signed into three devices at the same time. What? Yeah. That would mean network drop the one device. Did it? It did. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was told one. Oh. <laughs> Duh. There are a number of people who have qualms now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard they dropped the one device and they're going to start going after shares. Was the word yeah, HBO the Go. Street. HBO now has a I've not seen that confirmed. Um, but no, yeah, HBO Go is still still sharing. So, you know, you yeah, can still I saw use that your mom's, you know, yeah, I saw that popping up uh, or, or for a little bit. Um, what I find interesting is that they're they're actually trying to go the over the top route, but they're doing it in a way that's like, hey, we're doing it with a device provider first and yeah. then we're going to open it yeah. up a little bit. And uh, they got a lot of money for that. Let's be they, they got a lot of they money got for a, that. they got a they got they they funded a couple seasons of Game of Thrones off that money. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but they I think the interesting thing there, though, is that they are um, that it, it's coming. That is going to go out to everybody. They are coming with an over-the-top service. Uh, this is something that I wanted to talk about a while ago um, when it comes to the, all of this like cord cutting and everybody wanting to talk about um, like, oh, I, I just want to pay for the channels that I want, like Sling TV. I think Sling TV is a great idea. It is a horrible execution. Yes. $20 yes. a month for like eight channels. Welcome to the new era of cord cutting. It's growing though. It, it's growing and it's mm-hmm. still $20 a month. But if I want ESPN, if I want the watch ES, or not watch ESPN, if I want the SEC network, I got to pay an extra five bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get a bunch of other channels. For it's that, like, it's right like a new back. starting point for cable. It's just and new the cable, cable model. It it's is. just new cable. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And if like, and I thought about this, I was like, well, uh, with the channels that I watch and the channels that my wife and I watch, uh, yeah, I could probably see like, okay, like scripts network owns, Food Scripps Networks owns uh, Food Network Cooking Channel DIY and HGTV, basically suburban white people channels. <laughs> I'm saying it that's the best package ever. <laughs> I'm saying it because it's true. They would charge ten dollars a month for that if they wanted to offer over the top streaming for that. They would charge ten dollars a month, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so I get that. Well, now I want ESPN. What if does ESPN charge ten? They charge fifteen. Mm-hmm. They're paying billions of dollars to sports leagues. They're going to charge a bit more than ten. Yeah. So let's say they charge fifteen dollars a month. I'm now at 25 for like eight channels. Yeah. We're now into that same realm. But, like- if, but then it's if that if this, this is not for everybody. If those are the channels that you watch, then, you know, that works. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's for those specific people. I'm not a TNT watcher, you know. If they had USA Network and AMC on there, then it's like, ah, that's actually not bad considering what do we, I'd have to do. Uh, you know, especially sometimes AMC is on that second tier. Right. Right. So you start looking at the bill. I was like, eh, really? You know, we can do this, you know. But um, yeah, it's definitely not something I would consider nice that they're doing. Not for me. Right. And, yeah. I, hope, and I hope there's a version that has that happens to have the things that I, I I like to watch right now. Netflix and Hulu have the things I like to watch. And that's that's where we are right now. I'm not I'm not going for Sling TV as much as I want ESPN because. Yeah. That, it's, I'm not nice, paying twenty dollars. It'd month be for nice to watch mm-hmm. The Walking Dead on Sunday, but let's be honest, I'm too busy. I'm not going to anyways. I'll watch it the way I have been watching it, which is buying it on Amazon. Which mm-hmm. is buying it on Amazon or waiting for the internet truck to drop it off. <laughs> I like my cord 
I'm not cutting it. And to each their own. And, and, and the services are getting better. You have a lot of options to watch things in a lot of different ways on Comcast, for yeah. instance. Yeah. They, they have they, that. And that's that's kind of the thing right now. They, I think we're in that like interim term mm-hmm. between when companies, when networks say, let's just get paid by the customers anyways. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That's what WWE, WWE is going direct to the customer mm-hmm. by way of uh, MLB's uh, AM. Um, oh, and you saw the HBO's going through And HBO's MLB going too. through them too. Yeah, and and listen, MLB Advanced Media, well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You've yeah. proven that you can show how many how many teams are there in Major League Baseball? 30? So there's so like, like, th- like 15 t- so games So there's 15 at a time. games at a time and there's, or, 162, t- there's 162 games per team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah. showing thousands or, of games or a hundreds year. of thousands of people can watch WrestleMania at the same time mm-hmm. with little issue. And, and really, I think most of the issues are device to device. Yeah. Because the issues that we see when we go see the pay-per-views at the Carlins, like mm-hmm. I think that's that device mm-hmm. versus I watch network on the Fire TV and I see a certain problem versus it's almost impossible on my Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. That's not them. Right. That's it interfacing with my internet. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I mean, that's... I think a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't work. It's like, maybe it doesn't work for you. Um, I can't watch Hulu uh, very consistently on my Fire TV. Works great on my Chromecast. I've mm-hmm. definitely watched WWE Network on a plane before. <laughs> I've definitely done it on my sitting laptop there, on a plane, sitting there at RAW and saying, "Well, I can pull up the pre-show while I'm waiting for this." You know, I, like, uh, that's a pretty powerful thing. It felt yeah. kind of fun watching. Uh, I think I watched a. I think I watched one. Um, by, by the way, this will be on w, WMS later. You should listen. Um, I watched. <laughs> a, I watched. I think the uh, Star and Gold Dust versus an Usos match in first class once. Ooh. <laughs> I felt fancy. <laughs> all right, all right. We got Keep this is going to be an all awesome things show here. Um, uh, Dutters, you got the pancake bot. Pancake bot. I, I'm just going to change my my thing to awesome kickstarters <laughs> because this is another awesome kickstarter. It is a um, you can make pancakes any way you want, like essentially any design you want. Um, it's a simple. They give you simple software where you actually just trace the design you want to make. So if you want to make, they show an Eiffel Tower is one of theirs. Um, if there's a sports team, you could just trace it, <laughs> and you can make any sort of pancake you want. Look at it. It's so, a it's a pancake three D printer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or it's a it's a uh, oh, what the hell were they? Oh, I said hell. Sorry, the uh, what, you can definitely say hell on this. Can we show. say hell on the show? I'm pretty sure we can hey, say hell on that show. We've improved. I don't um, think Slice on Broadway will mind. But they uh, they actually had a um, I saw one of these when I was a kid. It was a uh, like a CAD printer, and it had like little markers. And a little robot arm went over and grabbed mm-hmm. a marker, and then. Did a whole bunch of drawing with like red, right? And then it would go over and grab green and would do a whole bunch that's, of drawing. That, with green. That's I spent that's, my younger years watching that at my mom's work, right? <laughs> right. This is it, but instead of having markers, it has a tube with pancake batter in it. Mm-hmm. So and you can make yes. it different colors. Uh, there's all sorts of options, and it's all you know, just loaded onto your SD card. I really want this. I really want this video to work on here. So it's not. Oh, no, no. no, the GIF is fine. The, the GIF, GIF is fine. The GIF, GIF explains everything. Yeah. Okay. It is, yeah. I'll so just... it is a it is a CAD printer that has pancake batter. Yeah, it's amazing. That's it. Uh, and in... flipping the Eiffel Tower is going to be difficult. <laughs> Drawing the Eiffel Tower. No flipping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flipping the Eiffel Tower. There's no, yeah, there's no question about flipping. There's no discussion about that. Yeah, this is, no... and this is the prototype. Uh, so yeah, now, when funny. now, what's funny is when you said pancake bot, mm-hmm. I thought of the pancake machine that are in hotels. Have you seen oh, these yeah. before? You like get a pan, you get like pancake batter out of a warmer of some sort. You dump it into the, the into the little like tube, mm-hmm. and then it just like pushes out perfectly round pancakes, and it takes like two minutes. I've oh. never wanted to do that because I don't trust the batter, but because <laughs> there's eggs in batter, and uh, yeah, it was just like it just it's this thing, and I was like, pancake bot, they have those in hotels. Oh no, we're at the no. next level here. No, this is next level pancake. This is like next level robots. You can get yours. Uh, the super early birds are all gone. 150. They they definitely way beyond our goal. I like their kicks. How they did their Kickstarter is the different levels are how much of a discount you were able to get. Like oh, the, the earlier that's on, genius. yeah. Uh, Pebble time. So did now that you're too. spending, yeah. So now you're yeah. spending more money, but you're still getting it early. But there's not. Which ones can you get? Okay, so the they're at one seventy nine right yeah. now. Uh, it is retailing. It's going to retail for three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. As somebody who uh, you can get two for three hundred right now. 
I mean, as somebody Bogo. who is a <laughs> no, it's Back no, now. that's not Bogo. That's <laughs> that's like that's not even half off. It's like Bogo, like buy one get one twenty dollars off. Um, People only buy Bogos. Yeah, it's Don't true. Don't you remember shopping? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I, I think the the I, I I the only thing that I disapprove of this is that it would take up way too much space on my counters in my <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> For like, I'm only making pancakes like maybe once a week tops. I'd have to make pancakes on a have you red seen our bread? Have you seen our bread machine? <laughs> I, 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 bread machines are, are silly They're to great. me too. They're great. Hey, 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 actually it was awesome until we got a diet that said no more bread. Right. And now you have an appliance that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I have an oven. It does the same thing. Bakes bread. It's wonderful. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways. Well, I think they mentioned it sounds like a lot of their target audience is for your cus. You know, this is businesses making special things for their customers oh if we had this at the cafe yeah. we'd still be around oh uh, hold on let me perfect just... for trade shows cafes restaurants breakfast buffets parties and anywhere else <clears throat> hold on oh, uh, can we buy one for brew on broadway Ooh. i mean go in on it <laughs> yeah i mean well it's a community coffee shop so you know mm-hmm. i think we should put a little cup at this <laughs> like it'd be, it'd be like so we can get a pancake bot and we'll put a little ipad with that gif mm-hmm. and people will throw money in there i'm telling you make any design uh i'm money, just going i'm money, just going food ahead. stamps everything i may have just sent this to the ceo of my company <laughs> seeing if we could get one of these for each office that oh we have. this is this is gonna be like this is gonna be the ping pong table of startup companies uh, yeah. i mean let's be let's let's call this what it is i mean i have a i have a devil tap kegerator in one of our offices it's pretty great nice. we have a, a shuffleboard table too i work at night i work for a very nice company i'm very happy where i work so um yeah, it, it's <laughs> we have one of those, and uh, I, I'm now saying now we need a pancake robot. I mean, that seems like the next level here. Yeah, right, right. Just get get, some... get ahead of the curve, Kraus. What uh, what do you got this week? I've got a plane. Whoa, it's going to go around the world does without it, a drop of fuel. Does Whoa. it make pancakes? Because <laughs> you got no, a, you got a bar a, here, a solar airplane. So the whole idea is they're going to take off any day now. I mm-hmm. think they might have a little bit of issues. And they won't be back till late July, early August. But the, but like I said, the intention is to fly around the world, not nonstop, but around the world without a drop of fuel. Nice. Which I thought was pretty incredible if you think about it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm interested to see how far we can actually take solar power. Mm-hmm. Um, I think solar power charging electric devices. I mean, l- l- let's take a look around, everyone. You're on a tablet. You're on a phone. I'm on a laptop. I have a phone in my pocket. Sorig has a small menagerie of <laughs> electronics around him right now. <laughs> all of this stuff is all power driven, right? Mm-hmm. If we can get to a point where we can actually draw that, we can actually draw solar power in a meaningful way and charge things like electric vehicles and charge all these various devices that we have. I mean, to, it, Apple just invested, what was it, $86 billion? Mm-hmm. Some significant sum of money to build a giant, giant fo- solar farm out in California that's going to power. Just, just to power their own data centers. Mm-hmm. Da- that's data center, incredible. It's capable of powering the data center, the stores, and the Apple offices. Any Basically, any Apple operation in california and well that's the other thing is that, like basically they'll they'll generate and and they'll get credits yes which will apply to everything they do yeah and and they and somebody asked at one of their shareholder meetings and this is actually more not just tim cook saying it for this but for other things um they said you know are you really sure you should be doing this you know can we find things that offer more value and he said if you're looking for like roi and things like that mm-hmm. when we're trying to do things that'll change the world get the hell out of our stock yeah. He actually said that on a, on a on a shareholder earnings call. Yeah. Um, I think this, and he actually said with this one though, they eventually are going to hit a uh, a savings because they're like, hey, if what if we get to the point where we're breaking even or making money on power, yeah, we'll be fine. Don't worry, we're gonna have to spend a lot of money to build this thing. They did it in uh, Made in North Carolina, so the one that runs iCloud that's down in North Carolina, which is a big big building that I've driven by a couple times. Um, it is. Uh, it is, it is a large solar farm that's right next door that drives the entire data center. They don't draw off of it. They have uh, hydrogen fuel – or no, natural gas fuel cell and solar power wow. that powers that entire data center. They don't draw off the regular grid. So they can – they if the entire power grid goes out down there, iCloud will still be there. <laughs> In the apocalypse. 
iCloud will still be there. It'll ask for your password 800 times, but it will be there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> awesome. Katie, you got an app for this week? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. Yes. It's a, so so is this is this mostly because you came from the Google platform? Yes, yes. So I mean, they, Whenever they, we've had these conversations, yeah, yeah where I've, I've been torn between going um, Android and going iPhone, one of the things was the calendar and the ability to see all of my calendars, because I share calendar app with various people, mm-hmm. and in an iPhone, you can't see them. Like, I can see what I have going on, but I can't see any of my shared calendars. Well... Google Calendar is now on the iPhone, and nice. it's it's very pretty. <laughs> it, it, it's all that uh, the material design and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, you're you're just just there. Mm-hmm. You're Everything's ready to there. go. Uh, even like these the sports teams. Like I have Penguins games in here, and they weren't showing up on my calendar. Mm-hmm. No matter how many times I tried to push it out to my phone, it wasn't happening. But now everything, all of my shared calendars, they're all here. And I've seen, like I said, we talked about before, I use uh, uh, Sunrise. Mm-hmm. But I still, like if I'm in the browser, I'm going to Google Calendar. I, I start a Google Calendar, just like that's my interface, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be nice. And I'm actually downloading it right now. So maybe we can show it a little bit on this side. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, but but I'm, I'm curious. Like, if I can stay all Google, then then sure. And sorry, Microsoft, since you just bought that thing, but it's not nothing personal. I just like the thing that. Um, and I didn't even know I had access to that calendar. Surprise! Let me make sure uh, it's going to step me through things. I'm going to skip this and be confused later. So that's great. Um, but uh, here, get our app cam here. But yeah, wow, that is that is really nice looking. You see my. It's full here, and of course it's integrating. It looks like it's got my podcast day from Google mm-hmm. Plus, so that's kind of nice. Um, and everything's pretty. Facebook, Facebook as well is in here. Um, and that's been something nice that pops up because now I don't have to think. Okay, I, I said hello. I said yay. Let's do this uh, 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 Facebook event now. You know, before you just have to add it to. You know, you have to do an extra step, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always liked that about Sunrise. That's awesome. That's great. A uh, thing that I've appreciated about iOS recently uh, is the fact that it has the um, it asks you if you want to give it access to your calendars that you already have in like your regular accounts. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to go through and do a whole bunch of like manual setup. I just go, yeah, give me that and nice. I will go from there. Um, I've actually been very excited about this since uh, I saw the original one mm-hmm. on Lollipop on my Nexus 7. Uh, let's see here. I see a whole bunch of things in there. I need to turn off those Google birthdays because those are dumb. Oh, they're killing me. Yeah. They're killing me. I'm like, I don't even know who this person is because that's like everybody that's ever emailed you in Gmail, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's yeah. not just that. It's also people that you follow okay. in, in Gmail or um, Google on Google+. Plus. So I at one point, I followed like there was a list that went around for like industry stuff that I do. Mm-hmm. And there was a list that went around. So I followed them. And there's like 300 people in it. So I have like 300 random birthdays in my calendar. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want that. Um, I, 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 have a, that. I have a lot of wrestlers' birthdays, but they're their real names, so it takes me a second to figure out who they are. I'm trying to... Oh, there we go. I was just about to say, where, where, is, my, um, where is my exchange account? I like that they put pictures. Like I have uh, Sorgatron Coffee, and it put a picture of coffee. Yes. And then uh, I had a lunch on here. And, and that's, that's a Facebook one, too. Yeah, and lunch. I have lunch with uh, art on here. That's one and thi- it's like plates. <laughs> and that's one thing I noticed. Uh, uh, Sunrise was really good about that because if I had something like something, I, I had TV in it, and it would show a TV. Oh, mm-hmm. TV tapings. I, I, I put down for the wrestling, and it puts a little TV icon by it. When I say coffee or lunch, there's 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 a plate, or there's a there's a coffee cup, or something like that. So now I've kind of automatically coded things like that. It's it's cool to see the Google calendars doing that. And too. you you can turn off Google Plus birthdays. Yay! Good. Nice. So yeah, this might just this may have become my new thing. Now the only question is, do they have a swipe down from the top option, a a, a, a home screen widget? Because I need I need yeah. to have my widgets. Mostly because uh, I am a terrible person. I never look at my calendar, like just regular calendar thing. Um, so if I can see my calendar, like I love Fantastical for this mm-hmm. because I can see my um, my entire know. calendar just like swiping down mm-hmm. from the top yeah. and I can go, oh, okay, the 18th is next Wednesday. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's, there's nothing in there. Mm-mm. But but a nice, nice step forward. Maybe we'll come in a new, new version because I've seen other apps where it's taken a couple of versions for them to pop up. So, especially since it just came out. Okay. Uh, well, on that note, 
uh, since, uh, well, we're not getting the news. So a lot of the things we had mm-hmm. kind of touched in here, uh, you can go over to the Definitely Awesome cast uh, on the Facebook group. A lot of discussions there. Coming up in the area, uh, well, actually, uh, just passed. If you go to uh, the Hardware Store's YouTube, they got videos from uh, Startup uh, Startup Weekend Education um, they over a, there. They have a WordPress event this weekend. Yep. I don't actually got rescheduled. I think. Oh, got to, okay. Yes. I retweeted it and they're like, hey, we jumped the gun. I think we rescheduled that. So I deleted them at some of the places okay. that I tweeted them to. Oops. But keep an eye out for that. They're going to do a WordPress for beginners event apparently up there at the hardware store. If you're around Allentown, know where to get to that. Um, also coming up, uh, Diggy. John DeGore hit us up. Um, he wanted to be on, but but he had a meeting, actually. But PGH 365, I attended and did the video for uh, last year's event. This is for uh, AIGA, the big graphic designer uh, uh, kind of group here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but it's a great event and a uh, great, great art show. Uh, I definitely recommend go checking that out. It is, what was those dates? March 27th is the big day so go check it out they say get some good drinks some good eats and some good artwork and they have uh, uh prizes and everything going on there uh go over to their youtube they should have some youtube action over here if not there i have it linked over sor- uh, youtube.com slash sorgatron media you can find the pgh 365 but a lot of there's a recap video and we had a lot of fun with uh commercials like com comic sans or papyrus which would you choose um most not wanting to answer because they're afraid they get fired over the answer um <laughs> It's a designer thing. Um, But anyways, also coming up, um, there's a big event uh, by Alpha Lab Gear and Next Pittsburgh. It's had a lot of stuff going on here in town lately. It is called uh, Mix It Up, the Uprise networking event coming up. Um, It's going to be Tuesday, March 24th. So you'll have to miss our live recording. Sorry, guys. Um, And that's going to be at Alpha Lab Gear down there in East Liberty. It's right across the parking lot from Target. If that helps you guys out, uh, go to nextpittsburgh.com. They got stuff all over the place for that event to find more information. Um, but uh, it's a, it's supposed to be pretty good. Um, they're going to be partnering with Mayor Pedito, Alpha Lab Gear, Figment, and the Greater Pittsburgh Nonprofit Partners um, for an interactive informal network event. So go check that out. And of course, we got great mini podcast going on all week uh the mini awesome casts where uh geez i don't even know what all we've talked about this week uh of course some other thoughts on the apple watch um i, I talked about over at sorgatron.com uh but in this past week on on, on mini awesome cast we talked about uh if i can get that list um uh nasa uh nvidia shield tv and uh some instagram expand expanding to carousels for the brands which that was kind of interesting um and other than that, any other events coming on you guys are aware of? You're all good? No. No, I'm good. I'm good. All right. AJ, he is? I am at virtualpotholes.com. Uh, my Twitter account is at AJ Kuftic, K-U-F-T-I-C. Uh, if you are going to be in the Greensboro, North Carolina area next week and you do any sort of IT-related stuff and you want to come have fun and watch basketball games and <laughs> hear people in the data center slash cloud industry speak, come to Vero Madness. You should register madness.vero.com. Uh, it is an awesome thing that we do every year. Uh, I will be there doing many, I will be doing podcasts. I will talk to you if you want to, um, <laughs> but this is basically what I do. My entire company will be there. We have a lot of fun. Um, and we have uh, this. This will this looks like Sorg. Our keynote speaker is Alexis Ohanian from Reddit. Oh wow! Yeah, we had Sean Acor or Sean Acor from uh, the Pursuit of Happiness last year. Oh. Yeah, so we get like a nice keynote speaker this year is, is Ohanian, uh, and then we have a bunch of like industry star people. I don't think I'll get to interview Ohanian, but I'm going to give it a shot. Why not? Yeah, because we, we talk about you're doing a, a great internal podcast. There's been yeah. a lot of reaction. Yeah. So I, I've, the, the, I've been doing uh, an internal podcast now. Uh, my, my actual, my, my awesome thing of the week is audio hijack three, which I appreciate the fine folks at uh, rogue amoeba software for, uh, I take all of the stuff that Sorg actually has around him right now. And it's all here on my laptop. <laughs> Well, yeah, there is that way to do it. Um, but Sorg does <laughs> video, and I can't do that with Audio Hijack 3. But it is... I have it set up so I can wander down here when I'm tired in the morning and th- and produce three podcasts a day. Audio Hijack? And walk away. 
What? What audio hijack? No, in Wirecast. Oh, like, yeah, like yeah. as we do here. I just boot up the, the awesome cast thing and the mayhem thing and the other yeah, thing. And you run through it. And I run through it and then I do a quick cleanup and it's up. Yeah, and that's so, what I have here. So I, it takes me like however long it takes to record the podcast. I, mm-hmm. I actually edited the second episode sitting in an airport gate waiting lounge. I was just sitting there and I edited it and an audacity, cleaned it all up. It's great through through the art through the um, artwork. I saw, it somebody up. was doing a daily show on uh, one of the podcast. Uh, I think it's podcast therapy uh, over on Google Plus, and they were talking about they were doing a daily show using Boss Jock, which is on the iPad. Our friends from PodCamp that uh, that that do Boss Jack. And uh, you hook up to a mic and they, you know, push it right up to lips and that's good. A nice streamlined concept there. So, Katie, you do any podcasts? You, 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 you were on a podcast recently. Did you plug that? No, I have. Well, I plugged it last week, but okay. I think it's, it's actually up now. Okay. It's uh, if you want to hear me talk about social media, go to the Scarehouse podcast page. And I talk stuff. It's on iTunes and such. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So go check that out. Ron Krause, he's at Crazy Krause on the Twitters. Yes, I am. With all your Microsoft needs? <laughs> yes, all my Microsoft needs. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, especially on Apple Day. <laughs> Anytime. I think we lined this up before we had the uh, a date announced there. So, um, Anyways, uh, but no, please check us out. If you have any other thoughts, please check us out on awesomecast.net. Look us up on Facebook, Google+, and of course the Facebook group. And uh, drop us a line, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Join us in the chat, live.sorgatronmedia.com at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time or so. And uh, big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on uh, the Twitters and the notes all night helping us out so we can remember what we talked about. Um, So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you to our awesome chat room that's been going all night over there at live.awesomecast.net. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. If you like professional wrestling, want your discussions, no holds barred, check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.